Hey, what's up, y'all? Checking out a brand new recipe today, showing off NX plus Next.js TRPC. And we might even see some Zod in here as well. Let's check it out. All right, so here we are inside of the NX recipe for Next.js and TRPC. Check out the description for a link to all of our NX recipes, which includes the one we're looking at right now. But looking at this project, if we want to see what's going on, one thing I like to do is just run the NX graph command. Here we can see a high level view of what's going on with this app. We have the web app. This is actually a Next.js application, and there's a dependency on our web app to our API library. And this API library is written with TRPC. Let's check out the code for the API first. So back inside of VS Code now, I'm gonna collapse my apps and look at my libs. And coming in here, we'll take a look at the root.ts file. So we can see right now, because this is more of a boilerplate starting point, we just have a router with a single greeting, which is pointing to a greeting router. So let's take a look at the greeting router. So we can see greeting is inside of route slash greeting. And here we can see this nested greeting router has a single git greeting, which is a query and it's going to return a message for us. So this is a pretty minimal API at the moment. The interesting thing I really like about this recipe though, and this is really what TRPC unlocks, is that we can really easily expand on this API and make changes to it. And as soon as we make those changes, we'll immediately be alerted if we break anything. And when we add any additional routers or endpoints to this API, we don't actually have to wire that up to our front end application. Really, we can just make changes here inside of this API lib. With the setup that this recipe shows, we'll just set this up to an API route on our next JS app. Let's take a look at that piece now. Coming into the apps here, so this is for the web app, so this is our Next.js app now. If we look at app, we can see there's an API folder here. So if we expand that out, we can see inside of this directory, there's a route.ts file. And here we see a simple handler that's going to take a request and send it into this fest request handler exported by the trpc server adapters. So really what's happening here is we're matching the endpoint represented in our file system, passing through that request, and then we're importing that app router from trpc that we saw earlier. And last step here, we're exporting this handler both as the git and post request handler. So this is set up to handle both queries and mutations to our trpc code. Now, like we mentioned before, this app router is going to change as time goes on and we continue to add features into our app. But because of this code right here, we'll just continue to handle any new endpoints or nested routers added to the trpc API with this line right here. So that's really quite cool. The other interesting piece of this recipe is this API util file. So here's where we create our proxy for our API. So we'll see when we look inside of our page component here, we're actually using this API exported from here in order to send actual requests inside of our React server components, which is really growing on me. This ability of using a sync await inside of a React component to easily pull data down is really straightforward. And I think this really actually helps to cut through all of the dimensions that come into play when you're doing full stack web development. So this is really neat. But if we take a look at the API util again here, we can see that what this is actually doing is creating an API that is actually going to work whether we're in a backend context or in a front-end context. If we end up calling this API from front-end code, we'll end up using the base URL, so we'll end up hitting the base URL API slash trpc, which is going to hit these, this handler that we were looking at earlier. And if we run it during our server-side rendering, we'll be able to use the Vercel URL to point to the correct location in that context as well. So client-side or server-side, we're ready to go. Now, of course, to see this in action, let's open up our terminal. We can cancel out our NX graph here and roll on NX serve web app. And that's going to start our development server. If we open up to localhost 4200, we can see there's the message from our backend API. And of course, if we want to see that NX task caching in play, we can go to a new terminal. And here we can run the command NX build web app. We can see the first time this will take a little bit. And there we go. In total took us 12 seconds. But if we were to rerun the command again, 73 milliseconds. So that's it for this video. We didn't get to Zod, but I promise we'll get to it in a future video. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss it. Let us know what you think about this format in the comments below. Keep working hard, y'all. We'll see y'all next time.